Transistors are pretty handy devices, but they have some interesting quirks. For one thing, if you take the exact same part number and measure the gain between them, you'll find that it probably doesn't match. Another thing is if you take a transistor, measure its gain at 0 degrees Celsius and also at 100 degrees Celsius, you'll find the gain is a lot higher at 100 degrees Celsius. In fact, it might be several times, maybe like three or four times more than it was at the lower temperature. Well, how in the heck do you design a useful circuit such as an audio amplifier if the transistor gain varies so much? Well, we use negative feedback, but that'll be discussed in some other video. But for now, we're going to take a look at one of the problems with that positive coefficient issue with the gain as the temperature rises. With your typical linear audio amplifier, there's an issue called crossover distortion. So you have to turn the transistors on ever so slightly and allow a bias current to flow through them, and that eliminates that problem. However, having that bias current flowing causes a little bit of heat as does with normal use. So as the transistor warms up, the gain goes up and it conducts more and that compounds itself because you know, as it gets warmer it conducts more, it gets warmer still, conducts even more. And without something to counter that, the transistor just gets hotter and hotter and eventually gets so hot or conducts so much current it destroys itself. That's called thermal runaway and has to be countered by some extra circuitry in the amplifier. Okay, it's time for a demonstration. I have this Radio Shack 301 lab experimenter kit. Brand new, never been used before. Never opened the components. I don't know when they stopped making these things, but it's probably been 10 years or so. But anyway, I have set up a circuit on it. And I'll just use a small transistor. And I'm kind of mimicking a fixed voltage bias circuit here. And that's the meter and the NPN transistor. So I'll turn on the meter to current and I'll hook it up. First, it has no way of countering thermal runaway issue. So when I connect power to it, the transistor's cool and it starts out at 6 milliamps. And it'll stay there for a little bit because there's not a lot of current. But as it starts to warm up, 14 I have a protective light in there so it doesn't burn up, but it's just getting warmer. The light's coming on now. It's uh, Without that light, which is now on bright, that transistor would have burned up by now. And in fact, if I squeeze the transistor with my cold fingers it cools off and the gain goes down and look it's conducting less the lights going dimmer and I'll let go of it and it'll start its journey back up again okay added another element to the circuit which is this emitter resistor now think of, of this transistor sitting atop this emitter resistor as voltage potentials go. So as this transistor warms up and conducts more current, there's going to be a higher voltage drop across this resistor. And because of that, the transistor sitting atop that resistor, it's going to take more current or um, more voltage to bias that transistor. Because of that, it counters the effect of thermal runaway. 
And here is the resistor added. I think I used like a 4 ohm resistor. And it may not be perfect because I really didn't calculate the circuit. And I'll connect it up. Let me adjust the uh, let me adjust the bias to about where we started before. So we're at 10. And it will go up some, but it shouldn't thermal run away on us. Okay, let it set for a minute. And it stabilized around 22 or so. Obviously, it didn't thermal run away like before. So there you go. That's pretty much how it works. Just add the emitter resistors and a lot more stable. Now, I will say in an audio power amplifier, there's other things they do, but I don't want to get into an overly long video about that. But that's it. Thanks for watching.